The United States flags waving proudly in North Carolina today. That's where the race is heading on the longest stage of this race. The field, not surprisingly, Brian, staying together for a while at least. In the early part of this race, everyone fears the climb that comes right at the very end. And so all of the riders were pretty unanimous in saying at the start this morning that they felt like it was going to be piano piano, which is Italian for slowly, slowly. In fact, however, the pace was 20 miles an hour. They covered almost exactly 20 miles. Here's a rider with a problem in the middle of the field right here, and he has stopped to change a wheel. Looks like a Saturn jersey from this vantage point. And, uh, well, the whole field is in disarray at this point now, trying to get around the problem. And here is the problem. It's a chain that has come off on a bad shift there, and it is Patrick Yonker of Team Australia instead, not a Saturn rider who had the problem. Scott Mercier, the king of the mountain, out in front, chalking up another one. He takes the Category 4 climb at the top in the early part of the bike race, and he has got a stranglehold on that king of the mountain jersey. The only one that can challenge him is Uria of the Kloss team. Well, when you've got the yellow jersey on your team, then it's the team, word perfect, who must do all of the work. You can't control everybody either. So, not surprisingly, the small breaks did begin. This is Bo Andre Namvet, who has gone away with Jos van Ert of the Festina team, the first action we've really seen from Festina. And soon enough comes Sean Yates, the animal, wearing the British champion's jersey. And behind him, Stephen Swart, the general, they call him, for Team Coors Light. And for a long time today, these four riders dictated the affairs. Motorola put a man in the lead. Their leader, in fact, the team captain, Sean Yates. They were taking the pressure away from the main attacks that would soon come. These four riders were being piledrived along the road by Sean Yates. They rapidly gained time over the whole of the field. It went up to over three minutes. Santiago Crespo, who has been getting better and better in this race as the race has gone on, is also in the thick of the action. None of these riders in the breakaway represent a danger to the overall lead of Raul Alcala. So understandably, he's just trying to make tempo on him up front with his team word perfect, along with the others who would bring these guys back and make it a finish for the favorites. So the race is all together. They've been in the saddle now for over five hours as the field comes together. But the two big mountains are still to come. And the best in this race are still right at the front. We're now deep in the heart of North Carolina and just a few miles left of this long stage today, but we're on the tough climbs now as the riders make their way up towards the finish. Jörg Müller of Switzerland, the former champion of Switzerland, has tried every day this race has gone in the mountains to try and win a stage. But he has the men that want the same victory just behind him at the moment. Until he gets a lead of better than a minute and 49 seconds, Jörg Müller will not be a danger to Raul Alcala. Of course, there are time bonuses at the finish, so so Alcala, Armstrong, and the rest will keep him close. They may allow him to stay away for the stage victory, but there you can see they're not going to let him get very far away at all. And all of the favorites, well, at least three of our favorites are in this group right here, and they include Atle Valsval on the left, Raul Alcala in the yellow, of course, Lance Armstrong on the far side, and joining them is number four, and that is Antonio Martin of Amaya. He is in the pink jersey. And the last man in the break is Scott Moninger of Coors Light, who we have not heard from in this race. He is another of their climbers on equal par with Mike Engelman, but he has been ill and off form. Nevertheless, he's in this move of five, chasing York Mueller, who's up the road. Two key men are here. Lance Armstrong keeping a very close eye indeed on the yellow jersey of Raul Alcala. Well, you saw yesterday, just 500 meters from the finish line at the homestead, this man was swept aside by 60 riders. He lost the day. Now can he stay away this time? He rides just ahead of the field. The heads of state are watching one another. And as Brian Drebber has said, they might just allow him the leeway he needs to finally get the win, which he so richly deserves today. Here on Beach Mountain, the first time the Torture Pond has ever come here. The face of Atle Volsvol, for the last three years, he's finished second overall. He must attack today. He must gain time on this final climb. Otherwise, he cannot expect in the last two days to win this Tour du Pont. 
maybe three will be the charm finally for York Mueller who, who will get a stage win but the three favorites watching each other back behind with Scott Moninger and Antonio Martin thrown in just for spoilers it's going to be a very interesting finish indeed on this final climb I have to think back to the very beginning of the day when I said that only a half a dozen riders would be in contention for the end of this race well it's not going to be very many more than that and if it is someone's going to have to come up from behind and it's very difficult to do on a climb like this there was approximately 35 40 riders started this climb the last four miles of today's stage they've been blown all over the mountain and now as the sun begins to set at the top of beach mountain with still a thousand feet to go york muller is making very slow progress indeed but he is climbing away from those leading riders in this race this is the Spanish rider Antonio Martin. The Amaya riders have attacked all day. Now they're playing the ace card. They've moved their man up to the lead group. Raul Alcala, who's got better and better these last three days, is now showing the signs of being the real true race leader. He's strong. As Martin climbs, Alcala's in front. Of course, the other two are going to mark him. They want to be able to use the element of surprise because, well, it's Alcala that has to defend his jersey. The others can attack him. Mueller continues to climb strongly, smoothly, and steadily. He's found his rhythm. He's found his aerobic threshold. He's not wanting to go over that because then he'll blow up. You can almost visibly see it if it would happen. Talking about blowing up, uh, Brian, the roads really go up on this climb. It's the steepest climb I've ever seen in the United States. And I would imagine, too, that many of these international riders, too, because this is rather like the fable of Alp d'Huez, which is the famous climb in the Tour de France. But Martin climbs well, and it seems that Alcala has this under control. Monica has now been dropped from this group, and the only other rider hanging on in here is Lance Armstrong. Out of these riders, only Lance Armstrong, to my knowledge, and Otlik Valsvall have ridden up this mountain before. A few weeks ago, just before a race down in Atlanta, the entire Subaru team came up here and rode up the final climb. At a roughly the same time, Lance Armstrong rendezvoused with his former coach, Chris Carmichael, of the U.S. national team. Chris is now the director of development for the United States Cycling Federation, and he rode the entire stage from start to finish. So he knows what this climb feels like after riding 147 miles. Well, look at the gap now as we pull back from our helicopter. This is the seat that we've all wanted in this year's Tour du Pont to see the big showdown on this mountain. They've talked about this mountain ever since Mike Plant announced the route of the Tour du Pont. They knew this would be showdown day. Armstrong is responding and he's attacking. Armstrong is going and Alcala must react because Armstrong is looking for 23 seconds. Less than that if he wins the time bonuses on the line. They're now chasing down Yogi Mula, but they're not interested in him. They want the win and the time gap. This is showdown on Beach Mountain. Don't go far away. Barry Bonds leads the Giants' explosive offense against San Diego's hitman, Tony Gwynn, tonight. Live on ESPN Friday Night Baseball. The last few yards of Beach Mountain and Armstrong's attack has been brought back by Raul Alcala. He's back in the fold, Ryan. Youth and vigor, Lance Armstrong is just not going to let anybody. Look, there he goes again. He catches Raul Alcala looking the wrong way over his left shoulder, and Lance Armstrong has decided to throw the gauntlet down one more time and just insult Raul Alcala almost by saying, OK, fine, catch me once, I'll do it again. And all this is being enacted just yards behind Jörg Müller of Switzerland from the Spanish class team. He is keeping his tempo. He is not panicking. He's hanging on for the what he hopes will be third time lucky. He's attacked three times on the mountains of this year's race. Now can he win? Notice the difference in style between Armstrong, who's up dancing on the pedals to disguise any kind of attack that he might make, any kind of surge that he would throw at Raul Alcala. Alcala, meanwhile, sits in the saddle, slightly larger gear perhaps, but nevertheless is just going smooth and steady. Now Raul stands up as if to make an attack and Lance drops in behind him but Raul might have just been stretching his legs this is going to be incredibly great because well first of all because they're only separated by 23 seconds there are time bonuses 10 seconds to the winner six seconds for second four seconds for for third if Mueller holds on to win just the placing alone will move either Armstrong or Alcala two seconds better than the other and they both know it, of course, Brian, and Alcala is waiting. He's almost tempting Armstrong to make his move, as if he wants to get into his drift slipstream and draft his way up to the top of this mountain. This has been a real tough climb. The riders now are just a shaving below the 5,000 feet mark. 
York Muller at last seems safe and the crowd up here appreciative of what they have been watching on television all the way up the climb and now Alcala is tempting tempting Armstrong into the attack Armstrong has proved today too he is a man who can climb and one day not too far away he might win but today of Switzerland takes the stage victory and now Alcala goes looking for just a couple of seconds can he get them he's got a couple already two more on the bonuses Alcala goes two he's trying to close that gap down so on the line Armstrong is second Alcala is third and I think we've seen over in fourth place there we will have seen um, uh, Atle Volsvol come over in fourth place so the heads of state come over second third and fourth they couldn't stop Jörg Müller getting his victory today that is a tremendous result for him so the stage 10 tomorrow the race stays in the hills of North Carolina but we're going down eventually to Winston Salem and then we have our wrap-up conclusion show on May 17 12 a.m. Eastern 1 a.m. Pacific the 1993 Tour du Pont has been brought to you by Big Red. And by Word Perfect. This program is brought to you by Word Perfect. And by Saturn, a different kind of company and a different kind of car. So the race is over for a moment. We'll be back again tomorrow. Until then, goodbye.